Uh, okay, great. Uh, so yeah, we've got Victor from South London, fantastic. Zaid from London, uh, Aisha's from Birmingham, Hannah's from South London, LSY13 is from Wembley, good name. Uh, Rahel, your Sam's classmate from uh, Haberdashers, that's great. You'll see Sam today, guys. So um, uh, he's he's not just mentioning some random name. Sam's going to help us out today uh, in answering some of your questions. Maz is from Wimbledon, um, South London. Matthew from South London. Rosie, South East London. Chris is from South London. Uh, Jacob is from London. Uh, Dubai, Leo is from Dubai. So we've got our first international student here. Uh, Leo is from Dubai. Anna's from South East London. So a lot, lot of Londoners here. Uh, Law Can, I think that is, uh, from South East London. Sam sent you. <laughs> um, Jacob is Sam, is your friend as well. Well done, Sam. You're recruiting people here. Uh, Victor, Sam is your friend as well. Um, Rahel, uh, London. Uh, Jacob, Jacob is, uh, is uh, I think Sam's mate as well. Sam's, okay, Sam, you, bring, you brought your... Uh, you brought your, uh, your, your, what do you call it, your fan base with you today. Um, uh, Atia, you're asking about the link, whether we can just share the link with everyone. Um, I suppose you can. I mean, you know, we've got 54 and, I, and there's a maximum of 100. So, I mean, I got 130 applicants and of course not everyone's going to turn up. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's fine. So, you, sure you can. Sure you can, Atia. Uh, if you know people who want to join us, uh, then that's perfectly fine. The link is the same for everyone, exactly. Um, James is from Plymouth. Uh, Joss is from East Midlands. Uh, Rahel, we are all cl politics classmates. Okay, good. That's good. So you're trying to dispel the myth that you're part of Sam's fan club and you're just his classmates now. Fair enough, Sam. Uh, Fantastic. That's good to hear. Uh, so brilliant. Okay. I hope all of you are year 13 as well. I know some of you did uh, mistakenly uh, you know, sign up, even though you're year 12. T today's session is really going to be focused on year 13 students, right? So, you know, if you're year 12, I would suggest you come to tomorrow's session. I, I, I think that's probably going to be more productive for you. Uh, because today we're really going to focus on year 13. Now I'm going to say a lot about how to respond to the, adva to the advanced information that comes from the exam board. Uh, so I, I suspect uh, that will be better for you and uh, brilliant. Okay. Um, okay, I think we're going to uh, make a start. No, there's nothing specific for AQA or Edexcel. Um, what I'm going to do, in fact, is I'm going to switch the chat such that it only comes to me for now. Now, that's not because I'm uh, a control freak, but it's simply because uh, that makes it easier for you to focus and not worry about what's sort of scrolling on your chat screen. So from this point onwards, until the end at least, uh, you, can, you can communicate with myself uh, or in fact with Sam and uh, 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 yeah, I'm going to introduce uh, Louisa and Sam to you, uh, who who will also be help, helping me and, and will answer some of your questions uh, a little bit later on. So you can certainly um, uh, send a direct message to the two of them if you want to. Uh, but most probably, it's probably better to send me the message and then I can, I can um, uh, you know, uh, verbalize the message to others. Uh, the recording will be available, exactly. Uh, and uh, you've got some internet cuts. Oh yeah, uh, Ola is, is joining us from Poland. So that's uh, Dubai is further than Poland, I'm afraid. Ola, so you don't win uh, the international prize today. Uh, but, um, uh, but yes, I think I will put it up on my website or, or something like that as we, as, we, uh, as we go along. Right, okay. I think we're going to make a start. So uh, let me make uh, sort of just some basic rules. You're welcome to send me a message anytime during uh, this session. For those of you who, who ordinarily uh, uh, you know, come to my webinars, you know that I'm, I'm fairly informal. And I allow for uh, messages at any point uh, during uh, the webinar. So you're welcome uh, to do that. And uh, let me just do that. Right. And um, uh, if, you, if there are some really urgent questions, 
uh, that, that you would like to raise, you know, just just flag it up. But otherwise, you can leave it to the end. We have got a Q and A at the end as well. Um, Rahul, Mr. Patel, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Because we have heard so much about you. Thank you, Rahul. I mean, that's uh, where did you hear about me? Was it on the the One Show or what's his name? But Boris Johnson wasn't he on the Good Morning uh, this morning? Yes. Um, uh, this is the first time you've come to my webinars. Okay, so Sam has been. Uh, thank you, Sam. That's uh, that's terrific to hear. Uh, Sam gets a cut, by the way. So you know, it's not now. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm. I'm until recently, actually, I uh, was a head of politics at a school for uh, at a college for uh, a good number of years, uh, for thirteen years actually, and uh, I run the website alevelpolitics.com. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter, although I tend to not spend too much time on Twitter. So occasionally I do respond. I, I, send, I tend to respond to messages, but I don't respond very quickly sometimes. Uh, but probably more importantly, apart from the website, which I'll show you a bit later on, uh, A-Level Politics, my substack is pretty, pretty important. Um, so I send out uh, news bites every week or every uh, sometimes twice a week uh, explaining how you can link the news to uh, your politics essays. You're welcome to use, I think they're really invaluable. I mean, I, I suspect uh, as you get closer to your exam, you could even go to dip into the archives of the Substack and, and just pick out some uh, interesting examples. Uh, but I try to sort of relate uh, daily politics to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the news. So, it, it, you know, it, I think it's well worth uh, subscribing to that if you haven't already. I know most of you probably have subscribed uh, to my Substack newsletter. Um, yeah, but that's it. I mean, I, I'm an FD Financial Times advisor. I, I write for the Financial Times on politics, uh, A-level issues. Um, I've uh, worked on a number of special projects for, for example, the Constitution Society recently, where we've prepared like an A-level uh, subsite for A-level students. I'll send you that, actually. It's, it's a really good uh, uh, website. Um, I said I, I used to be a uh, head of politics. I've taken some time out uh, of, of uh, formal teachings uh, in order to uh, in order to continue my in order to, to, to continue my study. So I plan to do a PhD uh, in um, uh, in politics, um, in international relations, in fact. So so, yeah, that's the uh, that's good. Hannah, interesting examples from where specifically you just got off. Oh, so uh, uh, I, think, I hope that I just cut off for you, Hannah, and it wasn't uh, generally, but, um, you know, interesting examples from, from the world of politics, right? So the idea really is to link uh, political examples to, to daily events. Anyway, right. Uh, Maya, I do have a podcast, but I don't update my podcast enough. That's my problem. And I do need to do that. Uh, and then maybe before your exams, I will do that. And uh, thank you, Rahul. And uh, uh, Rahul, what is your political stance? Are you left or right? Rahul, I'm all over the place. And I don't ever say, I've never said to my students where I, where my, um, what my politics affiliations are. So sometimes students walk in and say, so you're just some liberal Democrat. And the other time they come in and they say, sir, you look like a conservative to me. And that's partly because I'm Asian and I wear it like a jacket. Um, but, um, but they can never figure me out. And that's quite good. I mean, I like to play with people's minds, really. I think that's a good, a good way to proceed. Um, right, Jacob, what will you be covering today? I'm going to explain that. Um, uh, you would love more podcasts before the exams. I think I would do that. And uh, fair enough, Rahul. Brilliant. OK, I mean, we've got we've got a good number now. Um, uh, it's not subscription. It's Substack. So you can just uh, you can it's a free thing. Uh, you can just uh, put your email into a level uh, Rahul, and uh, you get a weekly news bulletin from me. Uh, uh, but uh, but we can do that. Right. Here's uh, so in direct answer to your question, Jacob, here's what I plan to cover today. So firstly, I, I plan to talk about who this webinar is for, um, because I think it's worth me saying a few words about because I, I suspect I've given webinars like this before and, and students at the very end say, well, so you've you you th this webinar is not for me. It's for, uh, I don't know, an A star student. Right. And so they sort of 
uh, dismiss it by saying, well, it's not for me because I've got I've got different problems. Uh, so I'm going to dispel some of those myths in my first section. Um, um, I'm going to go through what most students are doing currently and why I call that bad revision. Uh, I'm going to explain how to maximize your revision through essay writing. So I, that's really the focus of today. And that's where I would like to solicit Louisa and Sam's help, because, of course, I've been working with with the two of them, and I, I must say uh, that they, they're, they're, you know, they've been working on essays for, for a very long time and, and doing and writing some terrific material. So I would like to introduce you to to Sam and Louisa today. Um, and, and, and actually, I want to spend quite a bit of time talking about timetabling. How do you schedule your revision? Now, of course, you haven't got very much more time left. Well, you've got, what, three weeks or three odd weeks left to your exam, your first exam. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, even though, you know, you, you've not got that much time, I still think you've got plenty of time to do to implement what I'm going to go through today. Right. So some of you may think, well, I haven't done very much at all until now. Well, I've, I, I've, I'm floundering in politics. So how can I ever recover at this stage? And I don't think you should give up like that. I think that if you to, if you were to follow what I'm going to suggest today as a as a re revision strategy, I would suggest that you can do much better than maybe what you're doing currently in class or how you're doing currently in class. Um, so I, I think it's worth listening. I should always say, I, I, I always do say, but I should say again today, it's worth taking notes, by the way. I am going to make these PowerPoints available. So you don't have to copy every little word down. I will send you this by email. Uh, but I do uh, recommend that you uh, take notes because when you write something down, the likelihood of remembering it becomes far greater. And often what I say may not appear on the screen. So it's worth uh, noting down, uh, making some notes as we go along. Right. So let's start with the first sub point. Who is this webinar for? Um, simply put, this webinar is for all year 13 students, right? Um, it doesn't matter where you think you are in your revision. I think what I, from my experience of teaching for the last, what, 14 years uh, teaching politics, I've sort of learned what good revision looks like and what bad revision looks like. By the way, uh, if you were to come to me 14 years back or 13 or 12 years back and ask me, uh, how should I revise her? And in fact, a student did ask me that, uh, say 10, 11 years back, or lots of students asked me that, but a student, I remember in particular, one particular student asked me, I don't know how to revise, how do I revise? Uh, my response to them would have been, much different to what my response now would be, right? So I've in a way developed my understanding of revision. I've changed the way I think students should revise uh, based on experience and based on just teaching for a very long time. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that a lot of what we as teachers say pass, that pass for good revision actually isn't particularly great revision, right? Uh, when teachers suggest that, you know, you should revise by X or Y or Z, Often uh, it's based on some theory, but hasn't that isn't grounded in in real lived experience, right? Um, uh, so it is recorded in, yeah. So first point to make is that no matter where you think you are, this is for you as a year thirteen student. Uh, whether you feel you're on top of your your revision, but just want to tweak your revision a little bit. Um, uh, or whether you feel that you are floundering as a student, this is for you. Um, uh, what I'm about to say, it's starting to sound really dramatic here. I actually, when I wrote this, I, I sort of thought to myself, this sounds like a very dramatic line, right? But I, you know, I, I can't say enough. I mean, I, I've said this now on, on a number of occasions to students at this stage in May before their exams. And those students who have listened to me, um, you know, many of them have come back to me and said, sir, you've saved my A-level. I, I realize uh, that the advice you gave me really did work, right? So what I'm about to say to you may save your A-level. Every year at this time, I tell my students bluntly that probably what they're doing is wrong, right? So, you know, uh, I usually, I'm quite diplomatic. Throughout the year, I say to students, you know, maybe you should be trying this. At, by this point, I'm, I've, I've run out of diplomacy. You know, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now dealing with Putin. I'm no longer dealing with the United Nations or with the European Union, right? So I just bluntly say, don't do that. You're gonna. You're not gonna do very well if you do that. You have to 
uh, change the way you revise. And I tend to sort of just prescribe to students, do this, you have to do this, right? And, and most of them, some of them, many of them respond positively. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't want to say anything negative about teachers because I was the same, but I find that many teachers fail to fully explain what it means to revise. I mean, I was the same, uh, as I said. Um, I think worse still, many students carry forward uh, GCSE revision strategies into A-levels. And uh, GCSE is all about sort of very low level intensity activities. It's about sort of putting lots of, you know, taking notes or condensing notes or putting flashcards together, right? Putting lots of pretty posters together. And, 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 and that, for many students that passes for good revision, right? Uh, I would say that, and this probably applies to many of your subjects. I would say that most of those strategies aren't necessarily going to be the most productive strategies at A level. Um, too many students fail to really get into revision until they feel the pressure of time. Now, I know you guys are feeling the pressure of time at the moment, but I've found that there are some students who, who just don't feel the pressure of time until the last week. Um, but the, by then, what happens is when you're on your last week before your exam, you've, you've got tunnel vision. You're focusing just on the next exam, right? So if your next exam is, I don't know, an economics exam, you're, you're then going to spend the whole week just focusing on economics and you're going to forget about politics and history and English and your other subjects, right? So it's important to think now and think strategically and think ahead uh, before you get into that tunnel vision and all you can do as a result of that is just focus on one essay, for example, or, sorry, one subject, for example, rather than all of your subjects, which of course is really important. Okay, so that's uh, who, it, who it's for. I hope I've, I've explained that. Um, let me say a few words about, well, actually, let, let me, I, I've just listed here what I, uh, what you've told me. So if you remember when you applied for today, when you subscribed to today, uh, you sent me, uh, I asked the question, and how do you revise? And many of you sent me a, uh, a, a list of, you know, revision, you know, what you currently do to revise, right? Some bullet points for revision. Uh, this one was quite funny, I felt. I don't really revise. I try to remember any facts, information, and my that and might make really scrappy plans. Okay, so, you know, this student's pretty honest. I don't really do much revision. I just sort of try to remember things and put plans together. This student uses blurting and recording myself and essay plans. You know, I, I think that's okay. I mean, I, I will come back to these by the way, but uh, I think that's, that's okay. This student likes to write notes, making uh, flashcards, uh, making essay plans mind maps and essays, uh, taking notes from a revision guide, uh, flashcards, uh, what is that, Pomodoro, Pomodoro technique, I don't know what that is, mind maps and documentaries, or watching documentaries presumably, planning potential essays, summarizing uh, my notes and flashcards and writing essay plans, mind maps and quizlets and, and uh, past paper questions, summarizing notes in flashcards, mind maps, flashcards, looking over exam questions. None of this really feels effective. I think this is a really perceptive point. None of this feels effective, though as I feel like I'm never, I have, I have never got an in-depth understanding through classes, uh, it was very surface level. So I'm still trying to catch up. I mean, that's a really important point made by this student. Like you don't feel you've got an in-depth understanding. So all of this stuff doesn't really seem to work in a deep way, right? Um, uh, we, we can talk about that. Uh, I usually revise off the textbook, um, uh, which, uh, you know, I, I will question. Uh, just go over my notes and reread everything. I'll question even more. Uh, writing notes and um, not so who's calling me. I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, writing notes and reading over them a lot and highlighting. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, very problematic, by the way. Uh, watching videos, looking through notes, very problematic. Essay plans, flashcards, some full essays, but I find this hard as uh, as I need extra time and struggle to find the time to write essays while I'm still at college. I'm going to talk about that. 
making detailed notes, uh, then planning exam questions and memorizing them, then writing them out in full conditions and peer marking them. I think that's the best strategy at the end there. And I'm going to explain why I think that's a really good strategy from this student. So if I was to tick, if I was to rate any of these revision techniques, I would sort of say no to a lot of them. I would say okay to some of them. I would say fair enough. But I would say probably what we get at the end there from one student, by the way, is probably the ideal. That's really where you want to be. Okay. Um, so let me go through revision strategies. And uh, I'm going to bring Louisa and Sam into this. In fact, Louisa and Sam, you, you're welcome to, uh, uh, you know, to interject at any point now, and you can you can start up your videos and and uh, and your um, uh, and your uh, and mute yourselves as well. So Louisa and Sam are uh, two students of mine. They uh, they where we I've been working with Sam for, for the past year. Sam, I think it was this time last year, right? Yeah, yeah. I think almost exactly a year. It was a year now if that's right so sam's got some some interesting ideas about about revision and louise i think we we started what a few months back february i can't remember now yeah around february. january time yeah january february time that's great uh, so uh, before I, I i i bring you guys in let me say a few words then about how i think uh what i think the best strategies for revision are now uh, I must say, I mean, I, I tend to sort of, whenever someone uses jargon in education, it, I tend to gloss over all of it, right? When someone talks about, I don't know, various sort of techniques and, and they try to bring them into acronyms and, and you know, try to convince me that this is the next big thing in, you know, in, in, in education, I tend to sort of find that I, I'm quite cynical by it all, about all of that. So what I'm going to tell you today isn't really based on you know, on some high minded house, high sounding ideas. It's really just based on um, my experience, you know, what I think works. Um, I think most students tend to end up doing mostly low intensity activities, some medium intensity activities, but they stay clear. They, they don't uh, do enough of the high intensity activities. And I think it should be the reverse. I think you should do much more of the high intensity activities. You should, of course, do some of the medium intensity activities to break things up. And you should probably stay clear of many of these. Or if you do these, only do it for a purpose that feeds into this, right? So what makes a high intensity activity? Well, a high intensity activity is to write essays out in full. And um, sorry, I've uh, someone may have annotated uh, thinking that I'm um, clear that yeah don't don't use the annotate tool I haven't worked out how to work out you know how to uh, uh, master zoom at the moment because I uh, presumably you all should have your own annotation uh, whatever you call it slide but I anyway I, I can never seem to solve that uh, so high intensity a high intensity activity is to write essays in full right from a list of potential questions I would say that's the gold standard. The more essays you write in politics, the better your written ability, your written style is going to improve. And the more you're going to be able to remember uh, the, the details of examples and analysis and judgments that you may want to put into essays. So I would underscore this a thousand times. It's a free line whip. I would say that writing essays is, is probably where you all need to be, right? If you can't write, you're not gonna be able to write all of all potential essays. By the way, you all should have access to my uh, potential essays um, uh, sheet or, or sheets or booklet. Uh, I've got it up on my website for AQA and for Edexcel. Uh, but um, you, know, you can't go through, uh, with AQA you probably can because not, there aren't very many predicted questions I think this year because your advanced information is far more slimline. But for most of you who do Edexcel, I think I've listed um, 60 questions. And um, uh, I would ask you to work through each and every one of those questions. Let us ask question, are those questions free? Let it around three quid. Um, I sort of put it at the price of a coffee. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're on my website. I, I will show you at the end, Lorcan, where you can access it. If you haven't accessed it already, I can show you, I'll show you where on the website you can find them, right? You need to work through each and every single one of these questions. You may not be able to write these questions co completely, but you should also, but if you can't write it, you should put detailed plans together. 
Um, uh, right. Um, if uh, uh, reading over those essays out loud and amending and rewriting those essays is also a really high intensity technique because you're trying to remember those essays. You're trying to uh, 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 bring, you know, trying to make those essays part of your latent memory. Uh, and teaching others what you've learned is also a really high intensity technique. When you write an essay, when you've worked out how to answer an essay question, then you go and speak to a partner or other members of your class and you tell them, okay, I think I've got a good plan for this essay. I've written a really good essay here. Let me now explain how to, uh, uh, my, let me give you my, uh, my uh, take on this essay. When you teach others, the likelihood that you're going to remember. It's like, for example, I, I always remember that the 2001 general election had a turnout of 69.4%. Now, the reason why I know that is because every year I teach that to my students like six or seven times uh, in a year. And so after a while, it just becomes an obvious statistic for me. The more you teach someone something, the more you're going to, uh, you're going to understand it. Right. Let me just quickly run through medium and low, and then I'll pass you on to Sam and Louisa. Um, a medium intensity activity would be learning from exemplar essays. So on my website, I've got a lot of exemplar essays. In fact, Sam and Louisa feature on my, on my website as, uh, as exemplar essays or, or the written exemplar essays. The examiner's reports are really good as well. Um, um, uh, Amy has asked a really good question. How can we practice writing essays without having the knowledge? I'm going to come back to that, Amy, because that is the question everyone asks me, right? And, and I'm going to give you an answer which may sound paradoxical, uh, but uh, in fact, um, uh, it, it doesn't in, in any way contravene what I'm going to say, uh, what I've said already, that essays are the key activity that you should be doing. But I'm going to come back to you, Amy, on that really good question. Uh, preparing examples to use in each topic and memorizing them. That's a good medium level activity. That's pretty good preparing maybe a crib sheet of examples and trying to commit them to memory, pairing up with other students and talking through essays and how to answer them. That's, that's really good uh, because again, it involves talking about an essay and that's a medium intensity activity. Planning essays on a general level, that's pretty good. That's a medium level activity. Watching documentaries, for examples, um, that's a passive activity, but sometimes it works. I mean, I always show students, I've got it up on my website, um, Cabinet Confidential, which is a, a really great documentary from the 1990s, which goes through prime ministers of the last few decades. And students who, uh, who watch that documentary tend to uh, write, uh, put most of the, many examples from that documentary into executive essays. So watching documentaries is no bad idea. But if these activities take precedence over these activities, and do not serve the high intensity activities, I think you've got it the wrong way around. I would say these are very low level activities. Uh, taking notes from a textbook, it doesn't help you. Yeah. Uh, I don't think at this stage, it's really what any of you should be doing, right? Uh, that doesn't mean you, you should uh, dispense with your textbook. It just means that it's not a high level activity. It's not really going to help you at this stage if you just take notes from textbooks. Rewriting your notes. I don't know why people think that's a, a positive thing to do uh, because you've got your notes and you're just rewriting them. I'm not sure if that's really that, but a, a grander project. Uh, condensing your notes is even worse, right? You know, I'm not sure uh, condensing notes. Now, Maya's asked flashcards about flashcards. I mean, you know, I've got a love-hate relationship with flashcards. To be honest, I hate them more than I love them. Um, uh, I would suggest that uh, putting flashcards together uh, isn't really that effective. Uh, I think that uh, it's, you know, it may help you in trying to remember examples. You could have flashcards of examples, right? I just don't think flashcards help you very much. And I've got Zaina confirms that hatred for flashcards. Well done, Zaina. Um, highlighting your notes and your textbook, getting a highlighter pen. And, you know, I always say to students, you know, what's, wor what's the worth having these highlighter pens on your table? Uh, and just going through, they tend to just highlight every little sentence. You know, you end up having a whole paragraph highlighted, right? How is that going to help you? You know, in, any, in anything that you, you, you know, it's not really going to help you. So I, th I think these are comfort comforting activities. They make you feel like, you're doing something because you're you're using time up, right? 
I'm not sure if they help you in any way. Um, uh, reading your textbook, I'm not sure if that's a really helpful exercise. You know, students tell me, so I'm still reading the textbook. I can't write essays. And, and it, it just, it, it doesn't seem to, I, for me, that doesn't seem like a very high level activity. Now, it doesn't mean, by the way, that doing these things will bear no results. That's not what I'm saying here, right? I'm not saying that rewriting your notes is going to produce zero results for you. It may produce some results for you, right? It may give you some results. I'm not saying that reading the textbook will give you zero. Of course, it's, it may help you. It may give you some, some extra angles that you haven't come across, right? Um, uh, but um, uh, I, I feel, my feeling is that students rely too much on these forms of activities and not enough on these, right? So my... I'm going to go into what I mean by essay writing. So I'm going to go through the whole dynamics of it, but I'm now going to probably, I'm fed up of listening to my own voice. I'm going to pass you on to Louisa and Sam, who I know, and hopefully they're not going to contradict me. And if they do, this would be, you know, a, a terrible experiment, right? But Louisa and Sam have been writing a lot of essays. Uh, and I've been looking at a lot of their essays over the last few months and year, in fact, for Sam. So I don't know, Louisa, can I, can I get you to, to start off? I mean, we've been working on essays since January. You know, you tell me, how, how valuable is essay writing in your revision schedule? Um, yeah, so for me, I'd say it's very important. It's actually all I do for politics at the moment. Um, at the start of year 12, I think probably until Christmas, I didn't write essays before the exam. And you could definitely tell from my grades just because the knowledge wasn't consolidated beforehand. And then around Christmas time, I paired up with a friend and we planned the essays together, speaking them out loud and discussing them, which also kind of helped consolidate the knowledge. And then we'd actually write the essays and swap them. Um, and that, that really worked for me because it helped me not only remember it, but also apply it. I feel like at school, I learned quite a bit of extra content that I didn't need in essays. So it helped focus my revision onto the exact points that I needed for the exam. Um, and yeah, so I thought I thought notes and textbooks are really good for planning the actual essay, but it just didn't do it for me because I needed to apply the facts I learned in the textbook. Um, and then before the exam, I maybe highlight and reread the essay and see how much I can remember from it or recall it a few weeks after having written it to see if it's stuck in my memory. So you write a number of versions of a single essay, is that right, Louisa? Yeah, so normally I write one essay with notes and from the textbook and with, with the plan next to me. And then a few weeks later, I'll recall it and I'll add it in, in another color pen, the bits I didn't remember. So I'll compare it to the original essay and see where the differences are. Yeah, that's, that's a brilliant exercise. So you write it you know, with the aid of notes and a plan initially. And so you're looking at your textbook, um, you're, you're reading over your notes as you write your essay. And then in a couple of weeks or in a few days time, depending on how much time you have, you, you rewrite the essay through memory. And then you, as you said, you fill in uh, the gaps. So that's a good form of recall. Um, I, that's a brilliant, brilliant. Um, and how long does it take you now to write a, I don't know, a standard 30 mark essay, say for Edexcel? Um, I'll normally set about an hour timer and I'll try to okay. get the plan and the essay done in that time. Fantastic. And if I don't get it done in that time, I won't stop. I'll just give myself more time, but yeah. the time pressure does help. Yeah. That's good. So you don't like give yourself uh, a, 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 an unlimited amount of time. You say to yourself, right, I'm going to spend an hour and I'm going to focus on this essay. And that's what I'm going to get done in this hour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. And, and before you get to revision, uh, so before you sit down at your table um, and, and start your essay writing, uh, do you have in your mind, have you like scheduled in an essay that you would like to write? At what stage do you know you're going to be writing an essay? Um, well, I normally just use your list and okay. I go through it and see which ones I would feel most shocked by if I came yes. across in the exam. Yes. And the ones that I find hardest are the ones I normally start with because that's where I've got the most to learn from. Brilliant. That's a really good, that's a really good idea. So you start with the challenging questions first and then you work your way through the list. Fantastic, Louisa. I think that's, that's really helpful. I may come back to you, Louisa. And, but Sam, you know, what's your uh, take on essay writing? Uh, yeah, um, so 
when I started properly revising at the end of year 12, just before our first round of mocks, mm. I was like a B grade, B grade student, maybe even a C grade student. Mm. Um, and then in my last uh, round of mocks, I, I, I got an A star. Um, and I think really the only major difference, I don't, I haven't ever done anything other than essay writing, to be honest. Um, and I think that is the most efficient way to learn. Um, and I think, I think efficiency is the main part about it because I'm quite a lazy person. And I think even with the low and medium intensity, I think if you did it enough, you probably could get the same results as the kind of higher intensity essay writing stuff. But um, it would take like hours, significantly longer than it does just to like write an essay or two, which in the grand scheme of things is less than two hours. If you write two essays a day, that's less than two hours of work a day. So um, I, I find it probably the most useful way to arise in, in that. Yeah, significantly more than like writing notes or anything. What do you... Uh, there was a question asked earlier on, so I, my apologies, I can't remember who asked the question. It was Amy, I think it was. You know, how do you respond to that question? If I don't have enough uh, knowledge, how can I focus on an essay? Um, I find that I mostly write essays after mm -hmm. I have seen them being planned by you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the primary way I do it. I'll go through um, one of the revision seminars you have um, done on the most likely questions mm -hmm. which um I, I think i think even the ones that are passed now you can still go and get so there, there's the essay plans and stuff for those yeah. uh, and i'll go through those and then i'll write them because that's the you kind of consolidating knowledge that you're only really looking at otherwise if you just look yeah. at the plans or watch yeah. the videos yeah um and then if i'm writing a question directly from scratch i either just record the knowledge or uh, if i really need to i can stop writing an essay and I'll, I'll go through kind of content that I'm missing, but I try not to like do like, personally, I try not to do um, like, like spend like 15, 20 minutes planning an essay before you write it, mm -hmm. because I feel like then you're just doing the same thing as writing notes, but you're getting a lot of information that you don't really need. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you write similar essays enough times, you kind of get the knowledge you actually need on the paper enough times that you remember it when you write the actual exam. Mm -hmm. um, Cause essentially that's what you're doing when you're writing practice papers is you're writing a question that might come up yeah so yeah that's good louisa how would you address amy's question uh, is it similar to to sam or what's your thinking about that mm, i hate to disagree but i actually think doing a detailed plan is really important for me i think i spend a lot of time planning it and i will do a lot of research to make sure that i've got everything that i need in my plan and then writing is so much quicker if I, if I start writing from scratch, I'll be sitting there thinking for a really long time. But if I've spent 20 minutes on a plan, I can easily write the essay typed up in half an hour. Um, so I, I'll take an essay question, which I, I don't specifically know the content for, and I'll use my textbook and I'll use Google and I'll learn the content while writing the essay. Right, so that's interesting because Sam and you, and in a way you're not that different, but Sam would prefer to just get put pen to paper, start writing, but research proportionate to a paragraph. So you're researching paragraph by paragraph. I get from what you've said there, Louisa, you would like to have at least some base information first, but you're not gonna spend too long on it, 20 minutes, get some, like a skeleton, and then you develop that as you write your essay and your, your research. Is that a fair uh, assumption of, you know, fair um, explanation, I suppose, of the two, your two positions? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I think both work. I think both, you know, at the end of the day, you're not spending, here's the thing, you're not spending a great amount of time before you get to essay writing. So some students, they spend a day, two days, three days before they write a single essay. Um, uh, what about, uh, Sam, actually, here's another question, which I'm sure a lot of students have, and, and my students often ask me this question. Um, but what if you're never, you're like, you can't write a fantastic essay. Like, imagine you go do this exercise. You do, you follow Louisa's method. You've written, you put a plan together, your method, you're writing an essay. And at the end of it, you think, this essay isn't that great. You know, isn't that a bit disheartening? Doesn't that show that this is not for everyone? Um, yeah, well, I think there's a distinction to be made. I think um, the difference is like, you know, you hear practice makes perfect quite a lot. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I think really practice kind of creates repetition mm -hmm. and it makes things more solid in your mind. Mm -hmm. So if you're writing essays um, over and over again and you feel like you're not making any gains, it's probably because when, after you finish writing the essay, you haven't really tried to reflect on um, what's wrong with it and kind of what can be improved with it mm -hmm. and um, any differences that can be made in, in the future. 
uh, to improve the essays. And if you just keep writing like that, you're going to keep turning out similar quality essays, I feel. Mm. I think probably trying to get them marked either by a friend or a teacher mm. um, or, you know, for tutoring, whatever. I, I got my for tutoring mm. um, just so you can... Oh, hang on. Oh. Hi, I'm just getting you. Let me just... Yeah. Sorry, my, my mum's just coming. Um, That's all right. That's all right. Uh, yeah, so I think probably that's the most efficient way is to get is to get it marked afterwards if you feel like you're still um, performing kind of below where you want to be. And even then, just writing it a lot, I feel like does improve it eventually. So, yeah. yeah Louisa, you, you seem like you want to come in. Um, yeah, I know from my school, at least my teachers don't have a lot of time to mark or they don't really know how to mark. Um, so I think finding example essays is really important. Mm. Um, find someone who's slightly better than you in essay writing so you can contribute to each other's um or use use your website so i use your website quite often i will steal phrases that i find really interesting i'll steal points and i'll just use them into my own writing um yeah i just i've kind of got like a document of phrases that i think level my writing up like evaluative phrases and i'll just try to slot them in as often as i can how do you get away so so you're not aiming i mean you're aiming for a good essay of course you know when you're writing it but you're not aiming for perfection uh, you're, you're trying to your best to find a, a good answer. And as you said, once you've written your answer, uh, you're then looking at other webs, uh, other uh, essays, or you're speaking to your friends and trying to find uh, better ways to phrase things and better ways to put things together. Is that a fair, you know, is that is that how you would say? Because I, I mean, that's a problem. A, a lot of students, we, we aim for perfection when we write. And so that's in itself makes us not want to write because we don't think we've, we can ever reach perfection. Um, that's got a profound point I've just made there, I think, on, on all sorts of levels. Uh, but yeah, okay. Um, uh, I have got some questions here. I know, guys, I've, I've taken too much of your time up, by the way, Louise and Sam. I know I didn't, I, I said to you that it would be much shorter. So if you need to go, please do to go. But I've got a question uh, here uh, from... Um, yeah, okay, Joss, in a way, I think Joss's question has been answered. I've been revising uh, by writing essays while still using the textbook. So in effect, you've answered that. You've said, of course, a textbook is a resource you use when you write essays. So that's 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 been answered, I'm sure. Um, uh, dun, dun, dun. Ah, Anna, how do I mark the essay on my own? Uh, know if I've uh, actually improved. So how do I know if I, I've actually improved? So. Louisa had an, an interesting idea. She pairs up with someone and uh, you what, pass the essay to them, you read their essays. And so in a way you're, you're peer marking, right? You're, you're helping each other out, another politics student in your class. Is that how you do it, Louisa? Yeah, I try to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a very good idea to pair up with, with other students. Uh, if you feel that you can't, there is no one that you can pair up with, uh, then you know get it marked you know from your by your teacher but I think Sam you made a point you know I think just the uh, uh, the, the sort of the just writing the essay in itself will help you improve you know the more you write the more you you will find that your your written style improves and your language improves and your examples improve is that is that a fair assumption a fairer I keep using the word assumption is that a fair conclusion uh, of yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I think especially if you try and do it in time conditions and try and replicate or well, exam conditions, really. I think definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is an interesting question for Maya. Do you think this approach could work for other humanities subjects, such as geography, even though there is a uh, there is more of a recall element uh, and there are shorter questions? Uh, Sam, what do you think? Um, I do economics, which is similar to geography in those shorter questions and then some longer essay based ones at the end. Um, I, I think generally essay writing is the best way to do it because it's, you consolidate content when you write the essays, yeah. but it's about the efficiency of what you're consolidating. Instead of going through the whole textbook and reading every single fact and trying to memorize something that you may never mention in an exam, yeah. you, um, you memorize the facts which you know are going to come up because these are the questions which you're going to be asked. So I, I think definitely writing essays is, is the best way to consolidate content and um, your writing skills as well, yeah. Yeah, good. good. Uh, Davina says, I do the same as Louisa, but I research doing writing the essay. That's great. Uh, we've answered uh, Milan's question. Jacob, uh, do you have any tips on thinking of points for essays? 
I, I normally am able to collect evidence very easily and recall it. However, the hardest part uh, for me tends to be actually thinking of points and counterpoints quickly. Louisa, points and count, how do you, how do you develop your points? Um, well, I think sometimes a textbook is structured in such a way that it lends itself to an essay, mm. but that's not always the case. Mm. And definitely recently, I've been relying on mainly your revision webinars. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Sam, any ideas? Um, basically that, yeah, I, I, I would say, I think um, when you're writing the points, uh, lots of the essays are very similar or that mm. when you write one essay, at least one of the points you've written there, you can bring into a lot of the other questions about that kind of gen uh, that kind of topic so any question on 1.3 for example you can bring into any other question for at least one of your points so I, I feel like if you write enough essays you're going to find the points if you if you uh, have someone plan them for you or you look at plans that have already been written and then write those essays mm -hmm. if you do enough of that you're going to know what points to bring up Good. generally I think oh that's great um so we've got a lot of confirmations here from students um Aisha's asked the question, how do I get top marks in AO2 and AO3? Uh, Aisha, I've got a, a separate, uh, it's a, a free sort of tutorial on my website uh, that goes through uh, source and non-source questions. And I talk about AO2 and AO3 there. So I'm sure a lot of you have access to those already. So you, you're welcome to just download that and, and have a look. Um, I, think that's, I, so I think that's it from... Uh, I mean, unless Louisa and, and Sam, you've got uh, other bits of wisdom you'd like to share with us. Uh, but you've been great. Thank you, Sam Thank you. and Louisa. And I, I, I do feel, I mean, I think, you know, the two of you have written a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of essays in recent weeks. And, and I've noticed with the two of you, I mean, I, you know, if, if I may say so, where you started and where you've ended up, I think you, you write now more consistently towards that top end uh, in your essays. I know Sam, we had a discussion recently. I mean, Sam just writes a lot in his essay. He's like war and peace um, for every essay, but it's all great stuff. So it's, it, it works really well. And, and Louisa, you know, you, I put up a number of, in particular, global essays. Louisa writes some really effective global essays that I put up on the website. So you're welcome to, to have a look at those as well. But uh, any thoughts, any last thoughts from you, Sam or Louisa? No, no. Yeah. Cool. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks for your time today louise and sam you're welcome to hang about otherwise uh thanks for your time it's great to great to uh uh to have your uh, uh your uh input right so let me just go through in fact i have got a few more questions here uh, uh da, da, da. what's the most effective way to structure an essay uh or plan mine are either too long or short lella um, I, I will go through that, Lella. I'm going to go through how to do that. Uh, uh, Rahel, is it okay to be consolidating knowledge right now and then two weeks before the exam go full out on essays and exam practice? Uh, uh, Rahel, um, no, I think you should start exam practice this minute. You've got to start today. Uh, you shouldn't be consolidating knowledge because as we just learned from Sam and, and uh, Louisa, you don't consolidate in a vacuum, you consolidate in practice and you consolidate while you write. Okay. Uh, Layal, sometimes I get stuck on tricky qu essay questions and don't have enough to write a full essay. What should I do in these situations? So, uh, Layal, um, uh, Sam mentioned and, and also um, uh, uh, Louisa mentioned that um, I do, I have been doing these webinars for the last uh, few uh, months, in fact, since February where we've been working through all the potential questions that are in my document or most of the potential questions. So you're welcome to just access those webinars and I'll give you the links to them uh, towards the end. And, and uh, I really feel those webinars are very helpful. In fact, uh, there was a student who recently contacted me and said that she had attended uh, one of the, in fact, looked at the videos of, of, of one of the webinars. And uh, for the first time she submitted an essay that got an A star. So, you know, my because what I do in those webinars, I plan essays. And so you, you've got half of, you know, the the activity of planning, which sometimes students find difficult, has has already been done. And now it's just a case of uh, of putting that into practice. Right. Uh, fantastic. Uh, James, uh, what about source questions? Do the same methods apply? Yes, they do. But you've got to practice source questions uh, quite regularly. 
Um, so, so for sure, but the same does apply to those questions. Um, Victor, so therefore open book essay writing is a better solution. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a good solution. Uh, that's what Louisa and Sam said. They don't write essays from memory. They write it from, from the textbook. They write it from looking at notes. They write it from uh, looking at my website and finding exemplar answers. Um, could you use this technique for English literature? Possibly so. Uh, yeah, that's fine. How do you remember stuff then? Uh, because I'm going to talk about remembering. How do you remember? So I'll come back to that. Rahel, um, you go blank when you see a question, but that's that's because Rahel, you're consolidating your knowledge, right? You're not writing essay questions. You've got to write essay questions because when you get to the exam, you should have covered the exam questions before you get to the exam. Nothing should be really a surprise to you in the exam because you've already covered those questions in your revision. Um, what habits and techniques moved your grades from an A, B to an A, C? I think that was, that was really aimed at uh, Louisa and Sam, but uh, I will probably answer a little bit of that later. And uh, Zaid, Zaid, what happens if you planned an essay which doesn't, which does come up, but within a source question? Well, in a sense, your points have already, most of your points will probably would have been covered. And the good thing about source questions is that it gives you your points, right? Your source is your plan. Your three points will come up in the source. So in a way, the, you know, the source helps you to plan an essay. Uh, but I, if, you read, if you download my source webinar, I go through how to answer source questions and what techniques you can use to quickly get, interrogate a source, right? Um, uh, Lorcan, do you have any, any material on writing 12 mark global essays? Uh, I'm gonna produce something quite soon actually on 12 mark because I know it's not on my website. Um, uh, thank you. Right, I'm gonna go through a few more things before we end. So. Uh, I know we've got lots of questions coming in. Uh, in fact, I'm going to answer these questions at the end. Let me go through my uh, the rest of my slides, and then I'm going to answer these questions at, at the end. Brilliant, right. Uh, so the first thing to know is you're not revising if you're not practicing essay questions. So don't wait until the, a week before your exam, before you write essay questions. Start doing that now. OK, the more you engage in low level or medium level intensity activities, the less prepared you are for your exam. Uh, 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 you have to change the way you revise. Right. Um, so the question may be asked, but sir, what if I do, do not have enough knowledge? And I've answered that. I think Amy asked that question earlier. Um, you write essays and and when you write essays, you're targeting knowledge. So in a way, your knowledge is proportionate to the paragraphs you write, you're writing, you're putting into your essays, right? So you're not thinking about just having an endless amounts of knowledge. You're thinking about uh, acquiring knowledge to answer that particular essay paragraph. So the knowledge, you know, as, as I think Victor said, it's an open, open book essay writing. You're trying to acquire knowledge as you're writing your essays. Uh, by focusing on an essay, you are taking notes paragraph by paragraph, as I said. Your notes are your essay. Okay, this is an important point. Um, don't think your notes are a separate thing to your bank of essays. Your notes are your essays. You know, you write essays, and uh, those essays are, are really your, your notes, right? This is what you're going to use before your exam. Uh, you know, I don't really find most students who take lots and lots of notes uh, I ended up before their exam just reading through those notes. The best way to uh, to uh, focus in the last few days before your exam is actually to work through uh, your exam essays, to read over your exam essays. So your exam essays are your practical notes. Uh, as I said to uh, Rahul, I think it was, don't delay in writing essays because you think you haven't enough knowledge or you haven't read enough of the textbook. Use the textbook to help you with knowledge, analysis, and examples when actively writing essays. Give yourself three hours, for example, for politics writing, uh, essay writing. So obviously a, a single essay shouldn't take you three hours to write, but give yourself blocks uh, of uh, in a day where you're just focusing on say politics, or you're focusing on history and you're focusing on whatever subject you study. Smaller, more intense sessions are more productive than longer sessions. So don't say I'm going to spend a whole day on politics, right? Because that's very rarely productive. 
spend only a few hours on politics and then move on to another subject. Um, and that gives you bite-sized revision. Uh, you should be timetabling each day. Um, I'm going to show you an example of a timetable in the next slide or two. Uh, and in, in your, uh, on your schedule, you should specify the essays you want to write. So don't just say, I'm going to be doing democracy next week or tomorrow. Or I'm going to do political parties on Friday. Actually specify the question you're going to be answering. When you sit at your desk, you've now got a question you're going to answer rather than just a general topic called democracy that you're going to try to find, you're going to try to revise, right? So specify as much as possible what you're going to do. Now, some students like to do this well in advance. So you, you, you create an entire timetable with specific essays you're going to do day by day. Or what you do is uh, you, uh, you, you don't do that. You don't write it, you do it in advance. But the day before or a week before, you're, you're allocating essays for uh, that week to come, right? Uh, uh, tackle the most challenging essays. I think Louisa said that and produce detailed plans of those essays you cannot write. So in answer to uh, Amelia's question, uh, is it okay to do detailed plans rather than always writing all of them? Yes. You're not going to be able to write 60 essays out between now and your exam, right? So, you know, don't, don't set yourself up to fail. Like I've got some students I tutor and they say to me, sir, this week I'm going to write, you know, I'm going to write 20, 12 essays. And I would say to them, no, you're not. And it, lo and behold, they're not going to write that. Um, so don't, uh, don't do that. Don't uh, uh, set yourself up to fail. Write, do a mixture of detailed plans and a challenging questions, write actual answers to them. Now, when I say challenging questions, there may be some questions that, that are more certain to come up than others. And I think for those questions, you know, like I said in my webinars, you know, the rights question may come up this year in democracy or the Supreme Court question. I'm talking about Edexcel, actually. Uh, with AQA, it's far more certain, you know, you can, you can specify the questions. And if you remember those of you who, who, who are studying AQA, I went through all of the questions that I think can come up in paper one. Uh, so it's worth uh, downloading that if you haven't accessed it. Okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Before your exams, you should have a folder full of essays and detail plans that you can use to revise from. Right. So your revision is to get your task, your aim is to get a folder full of essays. And that folder is what you're going to revise from uh, when you get closer to your exam. So I have produced the following, um, you know, a six point plan or six point process to write in good uh, essays and consolidating uh, your uh, your knowledge. Uh, always start your revision with an essay question. Plan your question in advance. Uh, write the essay untimed, a paragraph at, the, at a time while you research. So that's really bringing, incorporating both Louisa's method and Sam's method. Planning first quickly and then writing and researching as you write. Reflect, read over and amend your essay. Right. So you may want to pass that to your teacher. You may want to pass that to, you know, a partner, but reflect on it, read it over, amend your essay, rewrite your essay. Something that Louisa said uh, for record, rewrite your essay and see how much of it you can remember through memory. You may want to leave that to the last week before your exam. You may want to start doing that as you go along. But that's a really important thing to do. So far, you probably just type in your essays from one to four. Point five requires you to write it by hand because, of course, you've got to train your hand muscles when it when it comes to because you, you want to be prepared for your exam. Right. Before your exam, write and read over your essays. So, uh, as I said, you've got a folder full of essays before your exam and you're reading them over and you're writing them out again. And all of that is part of retrieval practice. It allows you to remember the more you write something, the more you talk about it the more you're going to be able to, uh, uh, to be successful, right? Uh, okay, I'm going through some of your questions. Uh, oh, let, in fact, let me say a few words about uh, scheduling and how to uh, schedule. Um, at this stage, uh, you should be maximizing your days uh, to write essays. So I think I've said that every day, you should really be focusing on an exam question or two. 
Uh, if you are not on study leave yet and do not find lessons productive, I'm going to be a bit sneaky and say, ask your teacher whether you can go to the library. I mean, I, I just met some students uh, uh, a couple of hours ago who are now at university and I asked them the question, um, have you uh, revised, um, like, have you, have you done a, a like, so let me rephrase that. Uh, when you were, uh, just before revision, you'd finished your content, you hadn't gone on revision leave, did you find lessons particularly interesting and instructive? And they both said to me, no way. We just found lessons to be, you know, not really that important. And teachers were going for old content and it wasn't particularly productive. And sometimes they had to spend a long time coming in. And, you know, now, of course, you may have to still go into school. I'm not saying skive off school, right? Uh, but what I'm saying is politely say to your teacher, can I just go to the library where I can get a quiet space and I can just work on essay questions and show them the, the evidence, right? At the end of the lesson, come and go to, you know, it's better that in an hour, an hour and a half lesson, you produce something. Uh, those students I used to, you know, I used to tell students to come, in, come into lessons after I finished the course. And you all should have finished the course by now. Um, but I, I used to get students to come into lessons. And I found that students were so unproductive because they've got each other to, uh, you know, to, to talk to. Um, and so what I started to do is I would say to those students who needed my help, stick around. And the other students just, you know, uh, tell me that you're here so I can register you and then go off to the library. And I think that's a really, that's a more productive way to work, right? Maximize your time, be selfish with your time now. Um, and don't sort of, um, don't spend too much time uh, being distracted by others at this stage or even being distracted by your teacher. We, we are the most distracted, you know, we, we distract students all the time uh, with our rules and regulations. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're still learning content with Misha, of course, attend your lesson. You know, I'm not saying leave your lessons if you're, but I'm sure you're nearing the end of content. So that, that's perfectly fine. Um, Always work in a quiet space. Um, your phone should always be away from you. You know, don't don't leave your phone near you because you're always thinking about your phone and you always want to leave. You know, I think you you know that. Give yourself two to three hours uh, per day per lesson per subject. I should have said there, two hours on UK uh, and one hour on ideas. So this is just a suggestion for now because your unit your component one exam is coming up. I think spend two hours a day on UK and maybe an hour. Uh, on political ideas if you need it. Uh, after a while, you may, political ideas, you know, there isn't that much to go for in terms of uh, questions. So you may get through political ideas much quicker. Uh, and of course, I am doing socialism and conservatism at the moment for those of you uh, who need help with planning socialism and conservatism. So you can look at my website for that. Uh, scheduling each challenging essay uh, or essay plan in advance. I've said that, so schedule in advance. Uh, I provided a majority of uh, potential questions based on advanced information. I think one of you asked me, here you go, you can scan that. I hope that scan works. I'm trying to be a little flash here. Uh, but at Excel and AQA, here you will find a list of questions, right? Um, I've also been planning a number of potential uh, question webinars. So each lesson we plan one or two questions and we, we thoroughly plan these questions. And as Louisa and Sam said, uh, they use those detailed plans as a base to write uh, uh, essay answers. And I'm fairly sure, I'm, I'm, I'm more than convinced that these questions will come up in the exam. One of these questions will come up in the exam. So the way I look at these webinars is, uh, when a student completes the webinars, we're on our third series now. We've, we've done, what, four, eight, nine. I'm on my 10th UK session. We do the, the 10th session uh, at nine o'clock today, in fact. Uh, it's not too far away. Uh, but um, uh, I'm fairly convinced that these webinars are going to, uh, uh, you know, hopefully students will be able to answer uh, all potential essay questions by going through uh, the plans that we work out in the webinars. Okay, right, because of time, I'm gonna rush through the rest of this, uh, but I, in a way I've said it already, but I think the next uh, slide is really important after this. So, you know, give yourself three hours per subject, make sure you in advance say that I'm gonna do a rights essay today, for example, keep away all distractions, 
use an hour break, for example, in between. So if, for example, you're on study leave, you're going to be able to do this. So from 10 to 8, maybe that's a bit too ambitious. I don't know. Uh, but give yourself an hour in between as a break uh, between your subjects where you just relax. Don't think about your, your A-levels in that hour. Watch, watch something, you know, go for a walk, go for a run, whatever you like doing uh, so that you're, you do have enough downtime because the more, you know, I hate this idea of students spending eight hours on revision and not, and not, and just being, you know, tunnel, having tunnel vision. I mean, that's really bad for you. Um, give yourself a break. And in fact, you'll be more productive if you give yourself an hour in between. Um, uh, okay. Uh, here is an example of, I will send you this, by the way. I have plotted out um, a, a revision schedule for component one and two. Um, I plotted it out day by day for you here, right? Um, Leo, I'm going to, I'm going to show you where to get those webinars. Um, uh, I'm going to show you in a second. I'll show, I'll flash up my website and I'll show you exactly where you can go to for those webinars. So just hang on for, for a little bit and you will get access to that. Right. Um, uh, so um, I have plotted out um, uh, day by day what I, how I think you should realize. Now, this is for Edexcel, by the way. For AQA, as I said before, it's far more uh, limited. Uh, I think I came up with 12 questions that you need to master in order to master paper one AQA, the UK government and politics. So I think you could easily make that up yourself because you've, you know, you've got more than 12 days. Uh, you can work for each. You have the luxury of working for all of those questions in your own time. But for Edexcel, it's a bit more of a challenge. So uh, I've plotted out what I think, you, how I think you could work between now and your exam. So this is from tomorrow. You can start with the rights essay tomorrow. Now, by the way, all of you may have, I will send you this so you can adapt it as you wish. You could, you, you know, you can change things around, no worries. But, uh, you know, start with rights, go for pressure groups, go for, and I, I'm going to say to you, and maybe I'm putting myself out on the limb here, but if you were to work through all of these questions, um, you know, and also plan the other questions that are in my booklet, I think you'll be re very well prepared for your exam. I really do think that these questions are going to come up in some shape or form uh, in the exam, right? I put here in the last column the series of the webinars for Edexcel at least um, and the lesson number that each question corresponds to. So if, for example, you didn't know, you know, you thought this question was a really challenging English devolution, then part of your revision could be to go to series two, look at lesson four, watch the video for an hour, uh, take the notes, and then write for the next hour, write the answer to the question. And I, I can guarantee you by the end of that hour, the second hour, you will have a good answer to that question, right? So, you know, we plan it in, in a lot of detail and, and that's the idea behind it. So I'm not gonna go for each and every one of these uh, rows, but, you know, my, my feeling is go, try your best to go through uh, uh, each and every single one of these questions. On the 14th of May, I've cheekily put in my, uh, my London revision day, uh, which I'm holding. So again, that's on my website. So that's a, a whole day where I go through principally political uh, contemporary examples and analysis that you can incorporate into your essays. Um, but again, I'll show you an example of that a bit later, a, a, a poster of that a bit later on. Right, what about political ideas, I hear you ask? Uh, oh, I should have said, right. Um, I have factored in consolidation. Before your component one exam, you're going to need to consolidate your, uh, uh, your revision. And um, uh, I'm going to, in the next slide, explain what consolidation means, right? Uh, so, you know, uh, I'll come back to that. But I think between the 22nd second and 25th, so for around three, three or four days, you should, you should just focus focus on consolidation activities before your component one and then before your component two you do a very similar thing and you consolidate component two between those days I mean you're probably going to need a bit longer than that but uh, I'm doing this because I know that you are up against the clock and those two exams are closer together so by the time you get to the 30th of May uh, where you have your component two exam uh, for Edexcel you should have gone through every possible question, either detail planned it or written out in full every possible question that you think 
could come up in your exam. As for component three, uh, there was a question earlier on, what do we do with component three if we're focusing on one and two? You have got something like 18 days between one and two to consolidate component three. My advice to you is do some component free work now for sure. Do make sure you answer, you know, maybe break up your, your revision by doing a couple of component free questions a week. But I think those 18 days then give you a lot of, not a lot of time, they give you good time to really focus on component free essays. And some of you have, have almost done all of your exams by, the, by then. So you could focus quite solidly on component free. Uh, I'm just, the reason why I put in component one and two now is I think you don't have a lot of time uh, to, to not focus on those first two exams because they come very close, they're very, uh, uh, they're spaced very close together. So I think you've got 18 days there, do some work now. But as I said here, uh, you have got a number of days to focus on component three after your component two exams uh, over. Uh, within that, I would I suggested, so if you remember, I said two hours per day for UK essays. I mean, spend your additional hour doing political ideas, right? So conservatism, socialism, and your non-core idea. And again, I've spaced it out week by week. Use this as you wish. You may decide this is just over ambitious for you. Don't worry about it. Do your best. Do whatever you can. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about consolidating Locan uh, in a second, uh, but I'm going to send this to you. I would suggest don't have you don't have to, you know, you can just print this out or you can rewrite it in your own way. You can subtract. You can take things out. You may have already answered this question, so you no longer need to answer it. You know, uh, replace it with another question. But I think this is really important to have something like this to revise from. Thank you, Amelia. Um, this is a, a, I don't know if Grace is with us today. I, I don't think she is, uh, but Grace sent me a really great email a couple of days back. She did one of my uh, webinars and for the first time she got an A star uh, in her, uh, in, and it was really her work. I mean, it, you know, the webinar just gave her a plan, uh, but she was then able to put, put uh, a, a good uh, exam, uh, good essay together. Right. How do you consolidate? Um, uh, uh, when would we receive a recorded revision version? Sorry, revision uh, of this session. By uh, when would you receive a video? Uh, soon, I will send you out soon. Uh, version exactly. Uh, Piers got his first A star as well. Piers has also been attended my uh, UK um, and the political ideas. Piers, I remember you were in the political ideas as well. Well done, Piers. That's really good to hear. Um, how do you consolidate? So as I said, before you get to your final, uh, before you get to your component one or component two, you need to spend a few days consolidating. Um, so as I said, you've got to have a folder full of essays. Samira, this has been recorded. I've said that now five times. Uh, you need to consolidate uh, your before your exams. And the way you consolidate is to try to remember as much content as possible. This can be achieved by doing the following, reading over your essays out loud over and over again until you look like you're crazy, right? But read over your essays. Uh, rewriting key essays in timed conditions to see how much you can remember. So a, a form of consolidating is to read it out loud. Another form of consolidating is to rewrite your essays. Reading out essays to your politics partner, as I said, uh, helps you consolidate. If you cannot remember parts of the essay, rewrite those again. Louisa mentioned that. There, are, there may be sections of an essay you can't remember, rewrite those sections only. Uh, the more you write, read and, and say and speak, in fact, the more you will remember. This is what they call active recall, right? Uh, at this stage, you can also write a crib sheet of examples. That's not a bad idea. You know, in, in your final few days, every time you come across an example from an essay, note it down in a separate sheet. So you've then got a sheet full of examples that you can just read over as well. Uh, it's a medium level activity, but probably quite important to do in the last, last few days. Um, I will probably do a webinar. Yeah, I may do a webinar closer to your exams on examples, but actually the, the, the revision day uh, in central London is, is going to be quite good for examples. I'm gonna spend the whole morning just going through each and every uh, topic and, and throwing out examples, contemporary examples for you to use, right? So, you know, I mean, that's gonna be really helpful. I did it recently at a school in East London. They invited me in 
to do a uh, a few hours and I, I did something quite similar and the students found that really useful so so and I think that's that's very good right so here's the uh, revision day uh, that's going to happen in London uh, I have got facilities to a facility to um, to beam it online do we say that anymore do be to beam it online uh, but you can you can access it online live as well so uh, you're welcome to 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 uh, to log on if you can't travel to London, but if you're in London, do turn up. It'd, it'd be great to see you guys. And uh, okay, right. I promise. I know I'm up against the clock here. I need to answer some of your questions, but I also promised you that I will show you uh, where to access stuff on my website. So I'm just going to. Right. Can you see my web browser here? I hope you all can. Um, Right, so if you go to tutorials, uh, this is where you get access to all of uh, me, my, the web, the, the revision day, that's a lecture theater, by the way, socialism, multicultural, I'm starting socialism on Friday, multiculturalism will begin next week, um, uh, the things that you've you, you already applied for, here we go, here are the edXL webinars, this is the one I'm doing today. So if you're interested in joining us, we're looking at a parliament question today um, and uh, you can access this. So just access it and, and, and apply for it. Here's the bank of questions. Uh, you know, these are four lessons, by the way. I've, I've tried to keep it as minimum as possible in terms of costs. Um, you know, of course, it's my time, but I don't want to make it prohibitive. Right. So, you know, uh, I, I think five pounds per lesson is, is pretty, pretty decent, to be honest. Um, uh, we're doing conservatism as well, so we're continuing that uh, this later on this week. Uh, there was a feminism free week that we did. I know some of you attended. Uh, I've already done global. I'm going to return back to global in that final uh, couple of weeks, 18 days. But we've done two series of global uh, already. So that's global. And uh, where's the other globe? That's global as well. And we've got AQA here. Uh, ah, also, I've got these free sort of webinars that you can look at that go through exam technique, how to write, uh, for example, a 12, 24 mark political ideas essay, how to write a source question, how to write, and I'm going to put up a 12 marker one soon for global. Uh, I'm not yet venturing into the US politics side of things, I'm afraid. Um, so that's where you access everything. And of course, if you want to access exemplar essays, go to essays and click on UK politics, for example. And there you will get uh, examples of essays. So I've got a fatterism one, got a label one. These are recent essays that we've put up, uh, but you can you can access them in your own time. Uh, is that it? I think I think. Right. So I'm going to answer your questions, Piers. What will that timetable be sent? I'll send it out later today. You'll all receive a PowerPoint with the timetable on it, right? So you'll all access it today. Um, I, I upload Zena model answers as, as much as I can. I have got a bank of model answers I've got to upload. I'm going to do more in the next few weeks. I know it's really helpful for you guys. So I'm going to put up much more, many more in the next few weeks. Um, uh, da, 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 this is very useful very good uh i've come yeah hello can i find the webinars i've told you where to find the webinars olivia is it too risky to revise certain topics in detail and not revise other topics it is risky olivia you need to revise it all and i think if you use my technique it becomes less intense to revise because you're focusing on essays and you and as i said to you there are a few key essay, essays per topic you need to focus on and I've listed them in my in my schedule. So I, I would suggest that you you refer to that schedule, right? Um, um, is there a way to purchase potential essay questions for conservatism, socialism, and feminism? So Zaid, I've I've given for those students who attend my conservatism, socialism, and feminism webinars, I've given a list of questions. Uh, Say if you if you don't attend the webinars or you don't want to attend the webinars, then just send me an email and I'll send you the list. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Um, if we're not on study leave, Anna, uh, yet, how many hours should we be doing? One hour a day? 
yeah, do what, what, whatever is realistic, Hannah. You know, whatever, you got to ask yourself, how much time do I have even in between lessons at school? How much, times do I, how much time do I have in the evening? And just be realistic about it. Sure. You know, I, I think that's very true, Anna. Um, uh, yeah. Um, how, long, how long would you say we should plan realistically? Rahel, I, as I said, you know, I think uh, Louisa said 20 minutes is a good time to plan. But remember, she's already gone through the webinars where we planned essays in quite a lot of depth. Right. So, you know, I think I think with those planning would be quite minimal. Um, uh, how does that work in Edexcel ideas in P1? So I don't get your question, Lela, so well. Can you ask the question again? Um, no, Miller, sorry. I'm not saying you revise six or nine hours per day on top of school. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you're on revision uh, study leave. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, you, I'm saying that's the ideal rather than, you know, you're going to have to adapt this schedule. Some of you are already on study leave. Some of you are not. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, uh, right. That timetable does not incorporate source questions. Would you recommend doing them for other past, from other past papers? Yes. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. Now, Piers, um, I may produce a list of source questions. I think, would that be helpful? I think I might do that for the advanced information questions. Yeah, I may try to work on that this weekend, this next weekend. Um, so yeah, uh, Joss, uh, thank you so much. This has been really helpful and made me feel a lot more confident. I'm really grateful. Thank you, Joss, that's brilliant to hear. Uh, Heaven, uh, uh, if we buy the webinars after you start the lessons, are we? Yeah, you have access to all the past, exactly, all the previous lessons. And, and some students actually don't like the live. They just like to listen uh, to the past. We're going to have to finish very soon because I've got my webinar coming up. Uh, and Zaid, you have signed up to socialism and conservatism. That's good. Um, is the socialism webinar worth it for AQA? Probably not, because in AQA, you only got a nine marker to do for socialism. Zaina, so I don't think it's worth it for AQA, then don't worry about it. Uh, I copy my notes, Rosie, I copy my notes repeatedly to memorize definitions and viewpoints for ideologies. Is that bad? It's a medium level activity. Fair enough, right? It's, it's okay. But don't make, don't do that in expense of not writing essays. I think that's the, uh, that's the argument. Um, uh, peers, we've said that, Zaina, uh, I can't do extracts for AQA, I'm afraid, Tana. Uh, uh, and source questions would be helpful. Fantastic. This has been really good. Fantastic. Thanks for this. Fantastic. I think mean, everyone's run out of steam. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Hannah. Wonderful. Uh, Olivia, thank you. Uh, see you in the next webinar. Wonderful. I think we've, we have to end. I've got a webinar in four minutes and I want to try to make a cup of tea. So I'm going to see you guys uh, soon, hopefully, and um, good luck to you. And I really wish you all the best in your exams and uh, see you guys, see you all later. Goodbye. See you, everyone. Good luck to you all.